Hi everyone, welcome to the Rugby League History Channel. Today I'll be doing another end of season review. This time it's going to be the West Tigers in 2021. I've already done season reviews for Canterbury, Bankstown, Brisbane and North Queensland. Tonight it's going to be West Tigers. West Tigers finished the 2021 NRL season in 13th place. They played 24 matches, 8 wins, 16 losses, 500 points for, 714 against, which was the second worst in the competition. Adam Dewey was the top point scorer with 174 points. And David Norfolume was the top try scorer with 13 tries. The club had signed a few players in the off-season. Dean Laurie from Benrith. James Roberts from South Sydney. Offeren Gowie. James Tarmo. Stefano Itakamanu. And they also had the mid-season acquisition of Ken Mamalo. Going into this year, there was a bit of optimism from West Tigers fans out there. Not so much from the general public. I had West Tigers finishing 15th place this year. I thought that they would really struggle. And I know a few West Tigers fans that were quite optimistic. They were expecting their team to challenge for a top eight position, but it didn't end up out that way. To start the year off, the club only won one match in the in the opening seven games. And pretty much that was the tone for the whole year. They were playing catch up from that point in time. But by round 13, the club sat in 11th place after beating Penrith, which was also the highest position that they sat in for the entire year. They never got higher than 11th on the table. In round 22, there was still a mathematical chance of making the finals, but with mathematical, you have to factor in other teams' results and you have to rely on other teams to give you a favour. And then in typical West Tigers fashion, in round 23 the next week, we've seen it in many years gone by where there's a big moment for West Tigers to do something. If they would have won this match against Cronulla, it would have given them a good chance to meet the top eight. But as it turns out, they lost that match 50 points to 20. And I remember tipping Cronulla to win that match because I knew what was going to be coming ahead for West Tigers. And then to top things off, last round of the year, they're playing against a Canary Bankstown side who came last on the table and only won two games all year. They had now to play for, and they thrashed the West Tigers 38 points to nil. After the season ended, there was lots of talks about Michael Maguire perhaps being let go from being the head coach of West Tigers. The, fa the fan base was divided on what was to happen, but in late September, it was decided that Michael Maguire would be the head coach of the West Tigers in 2022, which I think personally is the right decision to go for. The last thing that the club needs is another head coach and another former coach being paid out. Looking at some of the best wins for West Tigers this year, um, there, there weren't many of them to be fair. Like, But ones I will mention are round 10 against Newcastle. They won that match 36 points to 18. I thought that they were quite good in that match. And then in round 18, they had a 42 points to 24 win over Brisbane, which showed that the club can score points if they get things right. But besides that, um, there wasn't really too much to, to crow about if you were a West fan. In terms of waste losses, where can I start? Round 7 against Manly, 40 points to 6. They were never in that match. Round 14 against Parramatta, 40 points to 12. Another game that they were never really in. Round 15 against the Scum, they lost that match 66 points to 16. And after time, it was 40 points to nil. And I was really worried that the Scum were going to beat St George's record from 1935, which was 91 points to 6 over Canterbury. And I went, how are you West Tigers? Show some fight, we can't let these cunts get yet another record. As it turned out, um, the score only won 66 points to 16, but a very awful display by West. And then in round 23 and round 25, as I just mentioned, Cronulla 50 points to 20 and a 38 nil loss against the Wooden Spooners, Canary Bankstown. So for the 10th year in the row, 
West Tigers don't qualify for the finals. Um, I know a couple of West Tigers fans. There's one that's on YouTube by the name of Champa Leagues. He was a toddler last time West Tigers made the finals. He's a grown man now, for fuck's sakes. In terms of players that they've signed for next year, um, they've signed Jackson Hastings and Oliver Gildart from Wigan. I rate Jackson Hastings. That could turn out to be a good signing. Oliver Gildart, though, I've never really rated him. Um, I think he might struggle in the NRL. And Tyrone Peachy, they just acquired him the other day for a two-year contract. They've, they've also let go of some players such as Russell Packer, who's retired. Billy Walters is going to Brisbane. Michael Cheekham's been released. Moses Embiid's been released by the club and he signed for St George. I'm pretty sure there's a lot of West fans out there cheering over that decision. And Joey Lee Lewis, only 12 to 18 months ago, he said he was the best centre in the game. And now he finds himself without a club after being released by West. Going into next year, how do I see West going? I know it's a bit early to predict stuff, but I think that it might be another season where they really struggle. Already in the off-season, things haven't started off great going into 2022. Uh, a day before their new logo was to be released, new logo, new ever was the catchphrase. You've got Dean Laurie, one of their best players, one of their best up-and-coming players, pitching in a Penrith shirt, celebrating Penrith's grand final victory. If you know me personally, I've already had a lot to say in it. I'm not really going to talk about it in this video, but I'm just going to say it's not a good look. So going into the next year, I think that uh, West will really struggle. They also had, throughout the year, the Tales of Tiger Town um, documentary. I haven't had a chance to see that. I've only seen clips of it, but I've seen similar clubs do this in the past where they do a documentary series and it, I think in some cases it can actually harm the club instead of help the club. I've seen that with the Sunderland here, with Sunderland Till I Die. That actually brought further um, ridicule to the club and it didn't really help the club's situation at all. But um, at the moment, West Tigers are the worst run club in the NRL, in my personal opinion. They have the worst retention and recruitment. They've got so many issues on and off the field and you only have to look at some of the YouTubers out there that go for West, they've all done videos on it. Fergo and the Freak, Andrew Ferguson, he did an hour and a half rant about how bad the West Tigers are at the moment and one of the old scenes I always remember is from Jack Gibson himself who said, a successful club starts from the front office. And West Tigers don't have that. They can't even get the front office in order. So until they can sort that out, I think it's going to be a long time before you see West successful. Anyways, everyone, that's me review of the West Tigers 2021 NRL season. I hope you enjoyed that review. Let me know in the comment section below your thoughts on the West Tigers season. So this is Rugby League History signing off. And I'll catch you all later in the next video. Alright, it's Tatty Bye for now.